We're gonna go ahead and cast our ultimate. No free Oni Fury for you. We're gonna cast our two. On my way. We're able to scare them off the Oni Fury. Hit Chango with our one, two combo. That's her beads and her immunity. <laughs> We're able to clean up the Pele, who's behind the wall apparently. Scotty goes down. We're gonna portal through. Our two is just short. That's super unfortunate. We're gonna activate our three, increase the speed of the Mercury. Set's here. We're gonna try to avoid set. We're gonna go through the wall, cast our two, and we're able to get Chonga that time. We're gonna activate our three, use our Aegis, portal through the wall. We're still kind of in this fight. We just gotta hang out in the back line away from them and near a wall. We're gonna cast our two. We're able to chunk the Medusa. We're gonna activate our three, gain increased movement speed. Erlong's in a bit of trouble. We're gonna set up a portal for him. He comes through, and I believe we are both out. We're gonna cast our two, and we're able to clean up the Medusa. That was a beautiful play. We scared him off Gold Fury. We got three picks. We saved Erlong. And that's the way you Janus. What a do, skibbity boo. It's your boy Shiny V Gaming. And today we're going to be playing the reworked Janus on the PTS and MIG. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. If you are a returning viewer, I feel like the changes that they made to Janus are kind of quality of life changes. Janus serves a very particular role as a mage. He's able to teleport through walls and he's the only god who can do it. He has an ultimate that allows his team to get from point A to point B really quickly. So let's go ahead and jump into Janus's kit. Janus's one, portal. Janus creates a portal in the world. If placed on a wall, the portal will create a passage through to the other side of the wall that Janus or any ally may use. The wall portal has a range of 100 units. The portal may be entered from either side but closes after one use. If placed on the ground, enemies in Janus will fall into the portal being teleported into the air above it. Enemies take damage upon landing and are considered banished during the fall. The wall portal duration is going to be 5 seconds and the banish duration is 1.5 seconds. Janus is 2. Unstable Vortex. Janus creates two unstable portals and flings them for dealing damage to enemies in their path. Enemies hit by both portals take 15% damage on the second hit. Janus is 3. Threshold. It has a passive and it has an active effect. The passive, Janus increases the movement speed of himself and allies each time they go through a portal or over a threshold, maximum of two stacks. While it's active, Janus opens a multi-dimensional rift. Enemies who pass over the rift are slowed and marked with phase. Targets marked by phase take additional magical scaling damage when hit by Janus's damaging ability. The phase slow is going to be 25%. The additional scaling is going to be 20 at level 1, 60 at level 5. The rift duration is going to be 3 seconds at level 1, 5 at level 5. The movement speed is going to be 10% at level 1, 30% at level 5 for a portal. And the passive duration is 5 seconds. Janus's ultimate through space and time. Janus blasts a ball of multi-dimensional energy across the battlefield, burning a portal into every surface it encounters within a range of 500. These portals last for 10 seconds and may be used by allies and do not vanish after the first use. Enemies hit by the energy ball take damage, increasing in magical scaling the further the energy travels. Janus is immune to crowd control while firing. The damage scaling is going to be 100% of your magical power at a distance greater than 800. And finally, Janus's passive. Passages. Anytime Janus travels through a portal or over a threshold, he becomes aged, gaining an additional 15% magical scaling on his next ability cast. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1, we want to put a point to our 2. Level 2, put a point to our 1. Level 3, put a point to our 3. Level 4, put another point to our 2. Then we want to max out our ultimate whenever we can. Max out our 2, max out our 1, max out our 3. So Janus did receive some buffs on his portal, his one. Players falling from a Janus portal can now be damaged before they hit the ground. Previously, they were untargetable until after they hit the ground, which was inconsistent with other banish effects. Going through Janus's portal will now have a unique sound different to the Blink Relic. Janus's two, Unstable Vortex. 
Unstable Vortex will now damage enemies who are between the two Vortex projectiles. A chain of energy connects the two orbs, showing the damage area. Enemies can still be double hit if they are hit where the orbs meet. And then Janus' ultimate through space and times actually got a little bit of a nerf. This ability can now only ever deal up to 75% of the target's maximum health. This ability's audio has been adjusted to be more audible as it travels. In terms of the start, we started with Conduit Gem, the tier 1 of Cronus' Pendant. 3 health potions and 2 mana potions. Conduit Gym is going to provide us 30 magical power, 15 MP5, and it has a passive that every second you gain a stack of arcane energy, causing your next damaging ability to deal an additional 2 true damage and remove all stacks. This effect can stack up to 20 times. We were getting some good poke onto the Changa. We were able to hit level 5 before her. We're going to go ahead and cast our 2. So we just hit level 5. Right now we're trying to save up enough money to be able to get the cooldown boots. We're going for max cooldown on Janus pretty early on. The reason we're doing this is it's going to allow us to use our abilities more often and the more abilities we can use the safer we're going to be and the more damage we can get off. Right now we're trying to be a little conservative with our mana. Mercury is invading the enemy red buff. We miss our portal. We get poked by the Changa. We get ulted by the Changa. We're going to go ahead and use our beads. That's her immunity. We're going to go ahead and cast our abilities and then run away. We're going to go ahead and back. We're gonna pick up the cooldown boots. We do plan on getting some lifesteal later on. We're gonna cast our three, that's gonna increase our movement speed. Now we wanna use our one on the wall on the right side. The wall on the left side of this start is a little too long for the portal to actually go through. We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate. We might get a snipe on that Medusa. Kind of just a blind cast. Looks like we missed. We're going to go ahead and get Chango with our 1. She's able to immune our 2. Now we want to try to hit her with the 1-2 combo again because her immune is going to be on cooldown. We're going to activate our 3. We're able to get her. We're going to cast her 2. We chunk her. Now we just need a couple basic attacks. She has a lot of archers. we got to be kind of careful here. Mercury hit a wall with his ultimate. Oh, she's able to immune it. And then our one <laughs> goes through the wall instead of on the ground. Super unlucky. And she's able to get the pick on Mercury. That was kind of a worst case scenario right there. We did kind of bone Mercury <laughs> by putting that portal through the wall. We're able to get with her one. And we're able to clean her up. She casts her ultimate. Here comes a Pele. We're going to activate our three. We're going to try to wiggle around right here. We have increased movement speed. We cast our two. Ooh, we're going to activate our one, go through the wall. She still has the potential to cut us off, so we're going to go the safe way, fall back to our tower. Right now we have 10% cooldown from the cooldown boots. We're going to go ahead and rotate to the red buff. That punk's out of here. An enemy has been slain. We're going to pop our last mana potion. We're going to activate our one. Make sure that we fall through it. That way we get 15 additional power scaling on our cast of our two. Take this jungle so anytime we fall through our portal, go through the wall, or get movement speed from our three, our next damaging ability is going to deal 15% additional power scaling. We want to try to take advantage of this on the wave. We're going to go ahead and back, pick up the tier 2 of Chronos Pendant. Buy some health potions and some mana potions. Right now we don't have a ton of MP5, so we are going to be picking up some mana potions instead of wards. Once we get Chronos Pendant online, we should switch that effort into wards. 
So if we take a look at Janice's passive icon, whenever his face is glowing and not grayed out, that means his next ability is going to deal an additional 15%. We're gonna go ahead and cast our ultimate. And unfortunately, we missed a lot of the walls that we were aiming for. We miss our one. This is gonna be a bad fight since we missed so much. We're gonna activate our three. We we're able to get set to use his ultimate. We're gonna go ahead and use our beads to immune the slow. Chonga rotates and is able to get the pick onto the Erlong. Mercury's rotating in. We cast our one. He gets thrown in the tower. We hit our two and we're able to get the pick onto the set. We're just gonna hang out in the back of the tower. We should be safe to back. Okay. They're able to dive Mercury in tower and get the pick onto him, but it looks like Paley went down to the tower and Mercury was credited with the kill. Right now, in the early game, it's all about just farming up, trying to get our Chronos Pendant online, try to get Soul Gem online, and then we can start being a lot more aggressive. Activate our one, follow through it, so that way we get this passive. We're going to try to get this red buff to get aggroed and then use our ability. We're going to activate our 3. Go ahead and cast our 2 for additional 15% power scaling. We're going to go ahead and rotate to these harpies. I think Janus will be stronger on this map than he was on the previous map. One, because of the quality of life changes he is receiving, and two, it's a larger map, longer and wider. We're gonna go ahead and cast our ultimate. Miss a lot of the walls again. Activate our three, gain increased movement speed. Medusa is on the tower. Fafner uses his ultimate. We're gonna fall back right here. Pele's rotating in. We're gonna activate our three, try to slow Pele down, try to increase the movement speed of our Terra. We get some good damage onto the Fafnir. We're in a little bit of trouble right here and we go down. We just overstayed. Whenever we ulted, we should have casted our abilities on the people in lane and then fallen pretty far back. We should be able to out-rotate Changa every single time because of our ultimate and our just abilities. However, we hung out in lane too long and she was able to counter rotate. So we picked up Cronus' Pendant. Cronus' Pendant is going to provide us 100 magical power, 20 MP5, and 20% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that every 10 seconds, the Pendant subtracts 1 second from all of your abilities currently on cooldown. 100 power is a decent amount. The 20 MP5 is going to be helpful. That uh, is the rate at which you recover mana every 5 seconds. But we're mainly getting this item for the cooldown and it's passive. She's able to immune the 2. We're going to cast the 3 so that way we get the additional damage. We're going to go ahead and rotate to the red buff. Chonga's here, we're gonna cast our two, we're able to secure it. She could be waiting right around this corner. Looks like she's back in mid, we're gonna activate our one. She uses her ultimate, we're gonna cast our two, we're very weak. Scotty's able to rotate in, we're gonna cast our ultimate. And Scotty's able to get the pick onto the Chonga. We pop a health potion right before backing. That was not a very smart thing to do. We're going to go ahead and start working into Soul Gem. We're just going to fall back to mid lane. Attack the Gold, Fury. Gold Fury looks pretty open, so we're going to make a play for it. Looks like they're on their purple buff.
R1 will do nothing to the Gold Fury. We're able to secure the Gold Fury. Fafnir is ulting in. Medusa is also here. We're able to get some good damage right there. We're going to go to cast our ultimate. We're able to get it to go through Chonga. And unfortunately, Scotty did not take our portal. We're going to go ahead and take our ultimate to try to rotate over to the Erlong. We're not going to really be able to 1v1 set. We're able to send Pele through the portal, cast our two, taking a lot of damage. We're gonna activate our three to gain increased movement speed. They're chasing me. We're gonna go ahead portal, cast our two behind us, drop our three again, gain increased movement speed. And I think we have up, oh, I spoke too soon. We're gonna go through the wall. Activate our three for increased movement speed. And we're able to wiggle on out of there. For our first relic, we went with beads because we're going against, say, Changa. Changa's ultimate could ruin us if we do not have beads. And then for our second relic, we're going to go into Aegis. We do have our ultimate. We're going to go ahead and cast it. Mercury's able to clean up the Pele. We're just going to rotate back to mid. Sets on our Mercury. We're going to try to help him out. Activator 3. Chonga is also now here. We're going to go through the wall. Cast our 2. And we're able to clean up the set. I think that's my favorite thing to do with Janus. Is surprise somebody by going through the wall. Cast the 2 and get the pick onto them. We missed our 2 under the Chonga right there. We don't want to stand too close to this Chonga. We're able to get her with her one, cast her two. She used her beads and her immunity. Enemies are missing mid. They're rotating left. We do have our ultimate. We're going to go ahead and cast it. Activate our three. Not our best ultimate. We missed a lot of wall. We missed our one. We're able to hit the Fafnir with our two. We don't want to overstay right here. Scotty's kind of rotated back. Chonga is able to clean up the Scotty. We're able to get Chonga with our one. We're going to cast our two. Sounds like she immuned it. We're able to get here with our 1-2 combo, and that time we did some real damage. Mercury's able to rotate in. We're going to cast our 3. Paley's now rotating in. We're going to throw out our 1. Throw out our 2. We're able to get the pick onto the Chonga. We're going to activate our 3. Paley's on us. Looks like you got to step it up. So that's able to get the pick onto Mercury. We're just going to go ahead and fall back. We have enough money for Soul Gem. And this is turning into a not great fight for us. Soul Gem is going to provide us 80 magical power, 150 health, 12% lifesteal, and 10% cooldown. So with this item, we're going to be at 40% cooldown, which is the cap. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate. We'll get into Soul Gem's passive in a minute. We go ahead and cast our two. Scotty's able to clean up the Pele. We're just short on our portal. We're going to slow him down with our three. We get ultimate by Medusa. We're going to go ahead and use our beads. Use our two. Send Medusa through the portal. And we're able to get the pick onto her. Soul Gems passive. On successful hit of an ability, you gain one stack. At four stacks, your next ability that damages an enemy god will deal bonus damage equal to 30% of your magical power to each god hit. 
and you will heal yourself and allies within 20 units for 40% of your magical power and will consume the 4 stacks. Goodbye, Changa. Oh, she was able to wiggle out. We cast our one. We're able to get set to go through the portal. We're going to activate our three. Cast our two again. Our one, unfortunately, did not hit the wall. We're going to cast our two. We're able to get the pick onto the set. Activate our three. This Changa is pretty weak. If we could get a one-two combo onto her, they're able to clean up the Erlong, so we're just going to fall back and play it safe. We don't have the most health, and if Pele engages on us, we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. We're going to go ahead and go for our enhanced red buff. So there are two greater scorpions on the map. One on the left side, one on the right side. If you destroy a greater scorpion, you're going to enhance the buffs on that side for your team. The one on the left side is originally spawning at the Gold Fury, and as soon as it goes down, Gold Fury will spawn. The one on the right side spawns at Fire Giant, and Fire Giant does not immediately spawn. Since we're going against a Chunga this game, we're going to be picking up some anti-heal with Divine Ruin. We're going to go ahead and cast our ultimate. No free Oni Fury for you. We're going to cast our two. On my way. We're able to scare them off the Oni Fury. Hit Chonga with our one, two combo. That's her beads and her immunity. We're able to clean up the Pele, who's behind the wall apparently. Scotty goes down. We're gonna portal through. Our two is just short. That's super unfortunate. We're gonna activate our three, increase the speed of the Mercury. Set's here. We're gonna try to avoid set. We're gonna go through the wall. Cast our two, and we're able to get Chonga that time. We're gonna activate our three, use our Aegis. Portal through the wall. We're still kind of in this fight. We just got to hang out in the back line away from them and near a wall. We're going to cast our two. We're able to chunk the Medusa. We're going to activate our three, gain increased movement speed. Erlong's in a bit of trouble. We're going to set up a portal for him. He comes through, and I believe we are both out. We're going to cast our two, and we're able to clean up the Medusa. That was a beautiful play. We scared him off Gold Fury. We got three picks. We saved Erlong. And that's the way you Janus. We're going to go ahead and pick up Divine Ruin. Divine Ruin is going to provide us 90 magical power and 10 flat penetration. Enemies hit by your ability have 40% reduced healing and regeneration. I believe they nerfed the duration. It was originally 8 seconds, but now I think it's a shorter time. They changed how healing worked in this upcoming patch. Now when you're out of combat, you're going to have 30% reduced healing. Fafnir, you're not going to be able to solo this tower. We're going to come through. These are two. Our team's crashing on him. I don't think I've said this, but Pele, uh, not Pele, the Terra has left the game, which is super unfortunate. This game was going in our favor. We're going to go ahead and cast our ultimate. Just short. We're going to cast our two, get some good damage off. That's the Medusa ultimate. We're going to throw out a portal. She goes through. We're going to cast our two. We're able to clean up the Medusa. Sets on us. We're going to want to try to find a wall. We're going to activate our three, increase our movement speed, slow set. The it's just set alive. We're able to hit him with our two. We're going to go ahead and portal under tower. So even though it's a 4v5, we are somewhat winning team fights right now. It is important to be diligent. And we're going to go ahead and back and start working on Charon's coin. With Charon's coin, we're going for percent penetration. And there's two items that provide a decent amount, Obsidian Shard and Charon's coin. I feel like if you were to ask me on any other day, I would say Obsidian Shard is a little bit better on Janus because of its passive allowing you to deal an additional 10%. However, I'm really interested in the movement speed on Charon's coin on Janus. I think this is more of like a test build than a this is definitely how you build Janus. Past the Divine Ruin. Felt pretty confident with Chronos Pendant, the Boots, the uh, Soul Gem, and other games I played where I didn't need to be able to anti heal. I'd pick up the Charon's Coin and then Rod of Tahuti. 
Gold Fury looks pretty open. Set is nearby. We're able to secure the Oni Fury, so that's going to spawn an enhanced minion in each lane. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate. We're able to get the set. We're going to cast our two. Chunk the Medusa. We're going to go ahead and use our one to go through the wall. Reposition. We're going to cast our two. We're going to kind of chase down this Medusa. Portal through the wall. Cast our two. And we're able to clean up the Medusa. Activate our three. Set's very weak. Maybe that's Fafnir. We're going to go ahead and go through the wall. Cast our two. Go for the Fafnir. I'm not sure if we missed our hit or if she was just super tanky. We're going to go ahead and one away. And we were able to wiggle out of there. Janus, the king of wiggles. We're just going to keep backing. There's Chonga. So we need to keep on backing. Next, we're going to be going into Charon's Coin. Charon's Coin is going to provide us 80 magical power, 20% magic penetration, 7 HP 5, and 20 MP 5. On God Killer Assist, a coin is flipped. If heads, you gain a stack of 7 HP 5. If tails, you gain a stack of 2% movement speed. Each effect can stack up to 4 times, and at 8 stacks, this item evolves. You also gain 1 gold every time the coin is flipped. The evolved version is going to provide 35 HP 5 and MP 5 and 8% movement speed along with the 80 power and 20 magic penetration. On God Killer Assist, the coin is flipped. If heads, you gain 150 health over 6 seconds. If tails, you gain 5% movement speed for 6 seconds. You also gain a gold coin every time the coin is flipped. We're in a little bit of trouble right here. We're going to activate our 3, slow the Pele. We're going to activate our 1, go down there with her. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate to teleport away. I'm going to cast our two. Oh no, our one got connected on the wall. We're going to use our portal from earlier to teleport out. Set is still chasing us. Looks like Set gave up. We're going to activate our three. Activate our passive. We miss our one. We're able to hit him with our two. Fafnir is on us. We're in a little bit of trouble. We're going to portal away. Go through the wall, miss our two, activate our three to slow him, and Scotty's able to get the pick. Chonga comes in with a fat ultimate, and she's able to clean us up. Looks like we are just short on money of being able to upgrade our conduit gem. I'm not sure if we're going to get to it this game. But of the two options, we would want to upgrade it to the Archmage's gem. Archmage's gem is going to provide us 100 magic power, 20 MP5. You gain one stack of demise, causing your next damaging ability to deal an additional 2.5% of your magical power and damage and remove all stacks. This can stack up to 20 times. We're gonna go ahead and portal through the wall. Daphne uses ultimate, Set is engaging, we're going to cast our two. Looks like Set is about to get that Mercury. Looks like Mercury's able to wiggle out. Medusa's here, we're going to activate our one and two. Our one's just a little short. We're going to keep running. This is not a good fight for us. We're two people down, really three people down because our support left. So right now we're on the defensive. I feel like we got close to getting two sides. We didn't really get anything for it though. Right now we're just playing a little bit of defense with the Mercury. Defend the fire giant. Krupa. Ultimate 
is ready. On my way. Looks like the enemy team's going for a fire giant. We do have our ultimate. We're gonna go ahead and cast it. A little bit early. We're able to get some damage onto the enemy gods. We're gonna activate our three. Kind of keep wiggling. Cast our two. We're gonna activate our one. They're able to secure the fire giant. We get some good damage onto the set. We're gonna be aggressive and chase this set. My favorite thing to do. Go through the wall and activate the two. Now we're on the run. Fafnir is going to rotate in. Kayla is here. We're going to activate our two. Go through the wall. Activate our three. We get body blocked by some minions. Scotty's rotating in. We're going to increase our movement speed. Go ahead and steal this greater scorpion away. All in all, I feel like Janus got some quality of life changes. Now your two doesn't miss if they're standing in the middle of the vortexes. Oh, we gotta be aggressive right here. We're going for the Phoenix. Here comes the enemy team. We miss our one. If we would have played our one a little bit better, we might have survived there. So now we have two down and two up, which is exactly how we were when we were pushing that Phoenix. We need to group as four and try to bait. Looks like the enemy team's not going to push too hard. We might be able to get back up and group as a four team. Group up. Oh, right here I'm saying, Scotty, come with me. But then I forget to actually send it. I just back out. I have my ultimate. I'm going to try to get Scotty onto one of the Phoenixes. That is the initial plan, and then we see a four or five stack going on in left. We're gonna cast our two. That Fafnir just got melted. We're gonna cast our ultimate. And right here, our mistake in this engagement was going through the ultimate. Now it's just myself left. I'm gonna go through the wall. Oh, body blocked by minions. Set rotates over. I'm gonna cast our two. We beats Aegis. And Medusa is able to clean us up. So as a full D side for them, they're gonna be able to get a Phoenix right here. On that last engagement, I should have shot my ultimate but stayed in the back line. I should not have gone through it because well, as soon as I did, I started taking damage from the enemy team. I vote no to the surrender. I think the game is kind of over. I think we lost all in that team fight. So we were winning the 4v5 for a little bit, and then they kind of won the last two team fights. And they're really punishing us for it. Well, sometimes that's just how the mop flops. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That really helps these videos out. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.